So, this should be part three of how to make an N95 surgical face mask uh, for the coronavirus. Or if you just have allergies or uh, asthma attacks from things. But this is fantastic. Um, now, I keep all my irons sitting up. You don't ever want to leave them sitting down because they'll rust out. They'll rot out and all that trash will keep coming through on your fabrics when you go to iron things. So keep them standing up. Try to empty them out. If you don't use them very often, try to empty them out. And using distilled water is really good. Uh, it'll keep it from rotting. But if you have regular water, that's fine too. Um, just try to go ahead and empty it out if you're not going to use it real often before you store it and put it standing up so you don't rot the face out because you'll eat the finish off the face. Um, I also have this kind of unit for light, super light fabrics. I don't want to torch, um, which I just love that thing. Uh, and I have this little iron too. This is a cheapy. This is expensive. That's Black & Decker. This is a cheap Black & Decker. But um, I prefer 1961 uh, iron over all of them because they're weighted and everything. But um, you can, for this type of project for doing the mask, you can actually buy a little tiny little iron at Walmart that's just about that big for around 20 or under um, that you can use for a lot of projects, actually. Uh, it's a pretty handy little thing. Um, there's some people like those iron-on rhinestones. I don't like them because they come off. But, um, no matter how you iron them, I don't care if you're doing light, heavy, whatever, they come off. And, I, uh, I like, um, I can't iron on this here. And please do not iron on the couch. We had some guests at our house. And my ding dong ex husband um, was a real tolerable kind of person. They were relatives of his. Um, and the wife was kind of country dumb. Um, and the guy, her husband, liked his socks and underwear ironed, or he would throw a hissy fit, she said. And it's pretty funny because later in the years he ended up with a divorce because his. Uh, in his job, now his, his wife is a nurse, I think she still is, um, and I've got this little ironing board, let me show you this, whoops, there it is, I got this little ironing board, with little feet you open up, and you buy this at Walmart, whatever, or a second hand store. And this has little rubber feet on it. Don't let them get wet because this chipboard will just self destruct. And I'm going to put it on top of here. It's better to do it on a counter. Anyway, um, this girl went and, uh, or the guy, uh, I guess he wasn't too particular about ironing because, I mean, he made his wife a slave, ultimate slave. Uh, and she was the one who made the money. And, um, uh, years later in Dothan, he was running a country and western nightclub, and, uh, the security videos picked up this girl that I know is married to somebody else, uh, them in the office, and taking all the money out of the safe, and putting it all over, and doing it in it, and, uh, he got fired for that, and I promise you that girl doesn't even know what an iron does. Um, I know her very well. Matter of fact, I, I've made clothes for her, although she was not an entertainer. Um, but her hus husband owned a nightclub, a different kind of nightclub than that country western club. But anyway, so we got this plugged in. I'm going to throw a little distilled water in there. You can get it for about 60 cents or a buck at the store, or use regular water. And you don't need a bunch, probably a couple shots. Push your button in. 
on your iron so you can fill it. It goes through the top. You spill some, it's not a big deal. But the thing is, you want to steam it out to make sure there's no corrosion in there or anything. Especially if you're doing a shirt or something. Because it will burn onto the fabric and it's a pain in the butt to get off. Or it's just some white flaky stuff. Now, some of them will have a little water level thing like the old 60s irons, which are so much better. These are so lightweight. And they just aren't used worth nothing if you're going to press something like a like some jeans or something. And that distilled water is good. It's really great for your radiator in your car. It keeps it from rotting. Um, you don't want to drink it. It's foul. It stinks like B.O. Um, but it's super clean. It's designed for metals and things. Uh, so, let me lift that heat up. I'm going to take it all the way up to the super hot setting, which is seven. We're using cotton fabric, so it can go super hot. It'll take a few moments to warm up. And then what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put a towel on here because sometimes you'll press out these different colors of fabrics that have been on here before um, where they've bled through and when they're brand new and stuff they still have some dye in them or whatever they'll bleed through and then I'm going to use this cover one just like a washcloth but you want an ultra clean cat towel because if it's dirty or has stains or colors uh, your kids Kool-Aid, whatever. Um, it's going to go into that fabric. It'll press it right on the fabric. And it then becomes permanent. So you don't want stains on whatever you're doing. Okay? Plus you want to try to protect your iron. Because of the glue, sometimes you miss and catch the glue. And the um, uh, iron. And it's a nightmare to get it off. So what we've got here. And also about your fabrics, if you can hold it up to light and see through it, it's crappy. Um, you want to have the wrong sides of the fabric. Now the mask goes like this. This is my liner, or my back side of my mask, okay? This is my front side of my mask. Okay, that's the front, that's the back. Uh, it would be better if you use like a beige or something. This is actually an ideal thing because, um, you know, the people overseas, like in India and that, they like the woman's face covered except for just the eyes. And some people have great eyes. You, you may have a crappy face, but you might have some really pretty eyes. And it's actually very appealing. Plus, you don't have to wear makeup. You don't have to worry about your lipstick or anything. Um, so it's kind of neat. It saves you some time, especially for those high maintenance girls. But anyway, so what you have is, um, you have your, uh, let's see if we can get this little tiny tripod up here. Okay, what you have is, um, your right side. So now this is where the mask goes together. That's the bend for the face. This one goes towards the ears. Okay, so these two pieces are going to be going together when you sew it. So, you want to make sure that you have the right side is here, and the side that fuses is here. This has got little dots of glue on here, and they'll melt with that, the iron. Okay, and you want to be careful, because if you iron on this, you'll melt it, unless you have a real super light setting. Um, uh, and then you melt the glue right into the iron too if you iron this side. So, um, 
Try to use a cloth. You can use a dish towel. Something that's cotton. Just like your fabric. Cotton takes a lot of heat. But um, you just want to get this fused on. That's all you want to do. And um, you can... I mean, you can use regular interfacing if you're good at holding this stuff, but do not use pins. I repeat, do not use pins on these masks because you'll risk somebody's life. You don't want holes in these fabrics, especially when you've got this facing on here. Um, and I don't care how you do it. It's a pain in the butt to sew it if you go pinning around the edges or pinning like you should pin to sew. Um, an experienced sewer does not have to do all that. And you can do it too. These are only little tiny pieces. Do not use pins, please. Um, even if you use clips, it's going to buckle. It's not hard to sew this. And especially when this is fused on, it's not a big problem. Um, because you can go, this is one layer, one layer of interfacing. One layer, one layer. And you can put a third layer in there if you want to. And then you can also put a fourth layer in of a uh, inset of interfacing that's not fused that means it doesn't have the glue on it plain solid heavy duty interfacing that can be removed okay um from the inside of the mask so you do have three layers three okay or you can just go with the two but um we are going to iron these in Make sure you've got your stuff the right way because the fusion goes on the wrong side of the fabric. And you want it just a little bit short of the edge so that when you flip it over to iron it, it's not going to um, glue up your iron. So I'm going to do this to try to get it to start fusing. I'm going to go ahead and leave my steam button up. So that it will steam and hold it down tight. And it's better to do it on a counter um, with a board like this. Or just a big ironing board. Um, yeah, that girl that had to iron her husband's, they're divorced anyway. Uh, her husband's, and it was over that deal with the money doing it in that office. Because uh, she sure found out. Uh, I think the girl even took pictures of it and put it on Facebook or some craziness. Um... Is she took the iron and his stuff and ironed it on the, the arm of our couch. Which, yeah, it was an old couch. He'd had it for years. And um, what it does is it melts the foam on the couch. And also, if you iron on the carpet, it will melt the carpet. Yep. So... Please get an ironing board. And I mean, even if you iron on the carpet with a towel, whatever, I'm telling you, you're going to melt that carpet. Don't do that. Okay, this iron's not quite hot enough. But I'm going to go ahead and flip this. I just don't want it to move till I get it set. It doesn't take long, so don't just cook it away, because then you burn your fabric. This fabric has a little bit of glitter on it, but uh, it's just some backstock I have. I have miles of it. Now, some people don't like to use the steam. I do. Because it adds moisture to the glue. So it'll set quicker without doing a lot of damage to the fabric. And it's hot. It's starting to settle. Okay, now I'm going to get this other one. And press it up. There's one. I'll line up my stuff. Right, you just want to have it just a hair short. See? Just a hair short. And you can cut your facing all the way to the end or cut it right here. You just want it here short so that the iron doesn't get goo on it. Just a touch. Because you will hate it when you do that. Let's 
the magnet is low enough so you can see. Okay. Now. And you want to try to do it flat. Now, usually when you wash your fabrics, you want to press them out so they don't have wrinkles in them. That's what they teach you in sewing class. So if you never took sewing class and you don't know really how to sew, that's as a rule you're supposed to press all of it out. That way you don't have wrinkles and stuff. Especially when you come to this conclusion. And the pre-wash is ultimate important. Ultimate. Let's see how that's looking. Cool. Okay, now we'll do the liner. Make sure this goes on the wrong side of the fabric. Wrong side. Like I say, if you can hold that fabric up to the light and you see through it, it's garbage. It's not enough for what you're doing here. It's got to be 100% cotton and it's got to be heavy enough to... Be a safety garment. No polyesters. No crown royal bags and all that. That stuff is not designed for this at all. Crown royal bags are throw away filth. So, I'm telling you, you may think it's cute, but it depends how much you value your life. I would rather have ugly than lose my life because I wore something that wasn't safe enough. But you iron on the fabric. This is the right side. Diffusion is under here. See the dots? And don't slide the iron around. Just lay it on top. Go for a few seconds. Go over here. You want to kind of go fast. Until you get to set. That iron is super hot. It's on the maximum with the steamer. Okay, now, hot, 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 and do not iron naked, I did that one time and burned right around my belly button, sliding a thing on by accident, in a hurry, <laughs> I'm telling you, just don't do it, thought I was slick, it didn't work, I'll never do it again, um, and please watch, you know, these hot items around your children, if you have small children around, because uh, they could get so severely burned. It takes a long time for an iron to cool down. When you get done, pour that water out, turn it upside down, push the button in. Pour that water out into the sink. And store it sitting up, not like this. It eats the face off of these machines. But you don't have to use fusing interface. And again, um, you can use just regular non-fuse. Now I'm putting right sides together. I'm not ironing the interfacing because the glue will seep through onto my iron and leave goo behind. And it's very hard to clean them. You have to use special cleaner on them. You can't scrub it off. Because you'll damage the, the surface of the iron. They have a coating on the iron. Okay. If you push it around, you're going to get wrinkles and other stupid things. So don't do that. It doesn't take long. Um, like I say, you can use, you know, washcloth. You can use a real thin dish towel that's super clean. Like a brand new one would be the best. Go down to Dollar Tree and get one for a dollar. A real thin one. And uh, that way it won't change color. This one's tinted just a hair because of the heat. You see that? And now this is pre-washed fabric, so if I use the dirty fabric, then what happens is when it gets washed, it shrinks down and the facing stays the same and it gets all mottly looking. So you want to pre-wash your fabrics, look at vlog one and two so that you know that. I'm going to do one final press. It 
it's hard for people that didn't take sewing. I've taken it for many years and have a degree in it. And I can sew, buddy. I can do tailor sewing. That's what I started in. Tailoring in the suits. I have a friend of mine in Nola, Cherie, I've known for years. And she does severe, severe, severe tailoring. She does um, theatrical clothing that's absolutely unreal. The time involved in that is amazing. Um, you know, like the capes and the gowns and all kinds of neat stuff for theater arts. And uh, super brilliant, talented lady. And that's just one of her favorite things to do. Now, I like to do formal gowns. That's what I mostly do is formal stuff. But it's stuff you generally don't iron. Um, or you And you don't use facing on. So a lot of the fabrics today people like are the sexy, glittery, and metallic stuff. Okay. So now we've got the facing. On this. That's the front of our mask. And this is the back of the mask, which is the liner. Okay, so we've set the facing on there, pre-wash fabric, and we're going to get ready to sew that. Okay, and we've got two layers. The facing counts as two layers of the um, filtering. Now, these are permanent. And now, this, this mask is a washable, reusable mask. And... Uh, and it will be a sterile of the coronavirus, if you're using it for that. Um, I want to show you how to wash it. Okay, here we go. See you in the next vlog. If you've missed one and two, you better go back and look at those. And uh, this is three. And uh, we'll see you in vlog four. Talk to you later. Have a great one.